Good morning, everybody. We're on week four, or my fourth video to the workforce. So I could spend a few minutes talking to you about all that's going on and hopefully let you see a little bit into my life uh, as things are changing. So let me get, uh, let me self-report and let's go a little personal. So what's changed in the Perna house? So uh, truth in lending, it's like Susan and I are back uh, when we first came in the Army 37 years ago. Uh, Susan's actually cutting my hair, uh, doing a pretty good job, I, I think, uh, despite my lack of hair. Um, and, and we seem to work our way through that, right, because it's still sensitive for most of us getting our hair cut. Uh, I find myself ironing my own uniforms, um, you know, something that uh, many years ago I decided I had enough money to go pay somebody to do. And, well, now we're not out delivering uh, uniforms to the laundry. I'm doing it myself. Be honest with you, I'm, I'm not a very good eater, but I'm trying to eat uh, normal as I've coached, right? Exercise, sleep, and eat right. Uh, you all are going through this in your homes, uh, whether you're, you're uh, helping your kids get through school, whether you're helping uh, teenagers adapt to the calmness of staying in their house, whether you are just coming together for family meals uh, for the first time in a long time, day after day, and uh, you're working your way through conversations uh, and things to help you get through the day. So kudos to all of you, great work. Um, it's important that we continue to stay resilient both personally and professionally. The other day I was reading uh, one of the many books about Winston Churchill, and I came upon a quote uh, because he was talking about some challenging times in his life. Uh, and in response to the challenge, his, he said, sometimes you have to be better than just you're good enough. Uh, sometimes you have to do what is required, right? I, I would tell us all we're in one of those moments. Frankly, we have to do what is required if we're going to be victorious uh, against this virus. Uh, we have to do it both personally and professionally, as I've talked to you before. Uh, and it's a challenge. We have to stay disciplined uh, with ourselves and with those around us. Um, our responsibility collectively is to take care of the workforce, protect the workforce. Uh, it's to ensure that the virus doesn't spread uh, and it's to maintain our mission around the world in support of those who are in harm's way. Uh, I ask that you do what is required to care for yourself and your families. Uh, if you don't feel well, Stay at home and quarantine yourself and the rest of your family. Uh, if you are at home, make sure you're following the rules uh, as been articulated for social distancing. We want to talk to each other. We want to keep each other's morale up, but we need to be cognizant of the distance between each of us. We need to understand that things we touch uh, may carry the virus. We meet, need to understand that speaking to each other in close proximity may pass the virus. If you take this challenge on and you act responsibly and with discipline, then we will achieve our number one goal of protecting the force and our number two goal of stopping the spread of the virus. Uh, and I just want us to be optimistic at all times but I use the word, and it's been used several times on TV, cautiously optimistic, right? It's not over till it's over, uh, and we need to be disciplined in our efforts. Uh, I would also like to talk to you today a little bit about staying in touch with each other. I've talked about this before. I, I've asked us to, to reach out to people that we know, and even those who are out on the front lines protecting us, our great medical community, our local leadership, our, our services that are protecting us, the police force, the firemen. Uh, and I've asked you to reach out and say thanks. Uh, take a moment, continue to say thank you. It is so, so important. Um, since I started these videos, I receive uh, many, many emails from you uh, from around the world at all pay grades, lowest pay grade all the way up to general. Um, and I greatly appreciate it. They're the best emails I get in a day, uh, and uh, they personally help me uh, as I work through the challenges. All of us, right, from our commander-in-chief 
um, all the way down to anybody in any community is working through this uh, crisis and we're doing it together, right? We can count on each other. Think about others first, right? Understand uh, and participate in their well-being, right? And a phone call, a text, an email goes a long, long way. The last thing I'd like to talk to you about a little bit uh, inside of our formation here uh, is how do we, how do we maintain uh, those three priorities I laid out? How do we first protect the force? How do we make sure that we stop the spread or participate in stopping the spread of the virus? And how do we maintain our mission support uh, around the world uh, to those who are in harm's way? You know me. I believe the key people in this organization uh, is not me. It is the first-line supervisors. The first-line supervisors are the key to our success. I need you. I ask you. I expect you to reach out to our workforce. Uh, it doesn't have to be every day, but it needs to be routinely. It needs to be periodically, uh, and it needs to be uh, to check on uh, them as persons, them as family members, and them as a part of our workforce. I would tell you, it will go a long way. Uh, and so I ask and I expect you to call and talk to our workforce. Okay, team, uh, I'll just close out with how remarkably proud I am of everything you're doing. Uh, we are contributing, right? We are protecting the workforce. We are constraining the spread of the virus, uh, and we are uh, meeting and in places exceeding our requirements to support the warfighter. Uh, and I am so grateful for what you do every day. Uh, we are blessed and uh, I wish you all the best. So thank you so much. Have a great day.